All right, let's start our work on two implies three. This one is gonna be a little bit easier, I think. Um, so same global assumptions as before. A is an algebra of sets on X, mu is an additive function, but now I'm gonna assume two, which is that mu is, quote, continuous at the empty set. So that means whenever I have a sequence of things in fancy A that uh, are nested and intersect down to the empty set, then mu of them converges to zero. So now my goal is to prove three, which is um, continuous from below. So that means uh, I need to suppose that I have some sequence of sets A sub n in fancy A that build up to some set A, which is also in fancy A. So assume that these a n's build up to a, where this is a sequence in fancy a, and a is also in fancy a, which is not automatic, right? Because we don't know that fancy a is a sigma algebra. Now. Now to make use of my assumption two, I need some, uh, sorry, where'd it go? Here we are, uh, sorry. So to, need, to make use of my assumption two, I need some uh, sequence of sets in fancy A that goes down towards the empty set. So here's one, uh, take the complements of the A sub n's. So remember, since the a sub n's are building up to a, they're nested and building up to a, their union is a, they're all subsets of a, right? A, the a sub n's are all subsets of a. So here I'm just deleting these subsets. And I claim that this goes down to the empty set. So that's, uh, that's pretty easy to see, actually, since um, this, this down arrow contains basically two assertions. One is about the nesting, that they shrink um, that these things shrink as you increase index uh, in the sense of inclusion, they shrink. That's just true because when you have an inclusion of two sets, then you take a complement, then the inclusion reverses, right? So these are shrinking down and they shrink down towards the empty set. That means their intersection is the empty set, but that's just De Morgan's law. If you intersect all of these complements, then that's the same thing as taking the complement of the union, right? So the intersection of all of these is the same as if I took the complement of the union. But the union is A, right? So that's the empty set. Okay, so we pretty easily get from the ANs build up to A to the complements of the ANs relative to A go down to the empty set. And Let's just uh, point out that this is, when you take these complements, this is a sequence of, of um, things in fancy A, right? Because fancy A is an algebra of sets, so it's closed under uh, complements like this. So this is true for all n. So by our assumption, which is two, uh, mu of these as a sequence of real numbers converge to zero. Right? Now that's almost what I want, right? I want mu of the ANs converges to mu of A. But anytime you have countable additivity, uh, you're gonna be able to rewrite this, or anytime you have, sorry, not countable additivity, anytime you have additivity, even finite additivity, you're gonna be able to re rewrite this um, as a subtraction. So here's, here's what I mean. Since A delete, since A can be written as a union of two disjoint sets, A sub n and A delete A sub n, since you can write A as this union, so that's because A sub n is a subset of A, right? These A sub n's build up to A, they're all subsets of A. So since this is true, um, and these are disjoint,
Okay, so since A breaks down as this union of these two things and these are disjoint, uh, we have, and they're disjoint and they're in fancy A, uh, we have mu of A equals mu of AN plus mu of this thing. That's by the ordinary additivity of mu, which is a global assumption, right? Mu is additive. That is a global assumption on the entire proposition. We're starting with mu additive. Uh, so for all n, for each n, we have this is the difference, mu of a minus mu of a n. So actually, if you look at this convergence statement here, it's about mu of a minus mu of a n, right? So thus, this is really about mu of a minus mu of a n. And that's the same as saying mu of a n converges to mu of a, right? Since mu of a is just a constant as far as this sequence is concerned, uh, this is by the algebraic limit there. All right, and that's what was needed. So that's it for uh, for two implies three. Okay, and then we'll we'll do three implies one in the next video.